This news rant is a bit different. Uh, this is a video I found on YouTube, and as such, I'm going to include it in uh, this video, so I don't have to, like, record the screen itself, because if I do, this is what would happen. You get that strobing effect. Because I still have and use and praise CRT screens. Anyways, with that aside, some Nutribullet owners are complaining that the device will burst and leave them with cuts and burns. So let's see what happens with this. This thing just chopped my hand to pieces pretty much. That hot liquid exploded onto me and created those nasty burns. She's totally on Facebook. The gruesome injuries you see here are being blamed on a product that millions of health and fitness junkies have in their kitchens. You ready to see it? Yeah. yeah. Let's give it a go. Schlink. We're talking about the Nutribullet, the highly popular blender used primarily for smoothies and superfood drinks. More than 40 million have been sold worldwide. This can help change your life. In fact, it could actually help save your life. Or it can burst on you and leave you disfigured. That's according to two Nutribullet owners who are amongst 14 people currently suing the company after they say their units burst and left them with severe injuries. And they're not the only ones. Take a look. Headlines seen all around the country. Claim after claim about units bursting on people and burning them. I was making it, went to grab it. The container exploded off and my hand went right into the blades. Brendan Casso tells me his Nutribullet burst just 15 seconds after turning it on this past September. These two blade heights basically chopped into my palm. This video demonstration paid for by the plaintiff's attorneys shows how it can happen. You can see the pressure build up as friction creates heat and the cap ruptures off just spewing steaming liquid all over the place and leaving the test dummy's hands exposed to the blades. Well, if you saw it with the test dummy hands like that, nobody holds the fucking unit like that. You don't want your hands in the path of the blade. That's a two-handed appliance. The way it works is you push the cylinder or the bullet part down, and that hits a switch that turns it on and off. Fine. Now, when you go turn it, then it'll lock in the on position. Now, blenders, food processors, stuff like that run for very short periods of time. I understand this thing is likely a piece of crap and would probably have to run a lot longer, but the guy said 15 seconds. Um, even in that 15 second time, you're going to have one hand on the base and one hand on the top of the bullet so you can untwist it so it'll pop back up and you can shut it off. So I think that Nutribullet is actually right in this regard because nobody holds the fucking thing like that and how these people are causing the thing to burst, well, that's probably uh, another thing entirely. And while it is true that if you have hot liquids in there, then when you stir them and mix them up, uh, especially because you do need a positive seal on that, then it could potentially burst. If your hands are out of the way of the blades, that would likely very much minimize the amount of injury that you might get. If it actually bursts, that would require that the unit unscrews, unless the threads, of course, are just such crap that it's like they're not machined correctly or, or molded correctly, and it really just does pop off, in which case the product is a piece of crap, but we knew that from the get-go. So let's keep watching. Still to this day, I have, I can't feel my finger. Caso's injuries were severe. Immediately wasn't pain, it was more like the WTF moment. It was deep and, you know, the meat was kind of hanging out. I had to go get stitches. These devices do explode and they do injure people. Cheryl Utal tells me her incident happened on a Saturday morning this past May. I had my hands on it, like I normally do, as you put it in and turn it to lock it in place. It was on for maybe 15, 20 seconds and exploded. In Utal's lawsuit filed against Nutribullet, it says the assembly blade detached from the canister, spraying the now scalding contents of the canister all over the plaintiff's face, arms, and chest. As a result, Utal says she was left with painful second-degree burns. It spins so fast that it heats up the contents, contents get under pressure, and the device explodes. The product has really no safety feature at all. 
Doug Roshan is an attorney representing both Casso and Utal, as well as 12 other clients who are suing Nutribullet after they say their devices burst and left them with graphic injuries. We represent one uh, individual whose dominant right hand was mutilated. A photo of that client's injuries in Las Vegas is graphic. Roshan tells me she's undergone six surgeries and is in constant pain. The unit uh, lid, the vessel exploded and it caused her hands to fall into the blade. Roshan says the problem with the Nutribullet is that it's a sealed vessel. That means there's no way for any pressure to escape and there's no on off switch. It builds up pressure and heat within the unit, which causes the body of the vessel to separate from the blade assembly like a rocket ship and it explodes. Well, yes, indeed, the device can build up pressure inside. That makes sense. But as far as scalding hot stuff, that thing is a puny little fucking motor. There's no way you could get this shit in there that hot. And besides, if you're making like, OMG, like a smoothie every morning with like strawberries and like raspberries and bananas, um, I don't think you want to drink that hot. And if it actually makes it hot, hot enough that it can scald and burn you, um, the thing is completely useless. I don't think that's happening. I think what happens is people put the thing on, they lock it in position, and pick up their damn phone. They pick up their phone and start fucking around with that, and then the thing explodes on them. Because if you're not holding it... Okay, if you're not holding it in that lock position, then yeah, it's entirely possible. It can actually unscrew itself and pop open. But then again, the worst you're going to have is cleaning up your omelet all over the kitchen and yourself. Okay, and as far as the thing running uncontrollably because the, the base with the blades is still running... Yeah, it might chop up your countertop a little bit, although it's unlikely. And then, obviously, you're not going to put your hand into the spinning blades to try to grab this black plastic ring and untwist it. No, you just unplug the fucking thing. How retarded are fucking people? But Nutribullet is pushing back against these allegations. Mark Suzumoto, Nutribullet's corporate attorney, tells me in a phone call that customer misuse of the Nutribullet is likely the explanation for any incidents of the device's bursting. Well, that's exactly what I just said, isn't it? While he concedes that the Nutribullet can heat up its contents because of friction, he says it is physically impossible for a Nutribullet to burst after just about 15 to 20 seconds of use with cool or room temperature contents, as both Casso and Utal are now claiming. For those reasons, Nutribullet is contesting the lawsuits. In response to Utah's case, they filed motions to strike portions of her complaints on the grounds that they are irrelevant or improper. Nutribullet has taken the position that it must be user error. Roshan says Nutribullet is denying any responsibility for his client's injuries. They believe that they are getting off by providing warnings in user manuals. Those warnings have changed over the course of the last several years to provide more information, but have not addressed the general safety concern involved with this product. Well, it is true that just about anything you buy today, if it does even include a manual whatsoever, there's probably about a page or two of actually using the unit, and the rest of the manual is simply warnings and Spanish. Casso tells me his Nutribullet left him with permanent nerve damage in his hand. The minute I try to close my hand rapidly, it doesn't come all the way in. And that's one of the reasons why Roshan is calling on Nutribullet to make what he says would be a cheap and easy fix, just installing a pressure relief plug. For a dollar a unit, they could make these units safe and they choose not to. Well, yeah, I'm sure that for about a dollar a unit they could install some sort of pressure safety release plug or something like that to help prevent this from happening I'm sure they would never blow off or very very rarely blow off you know and then of course other people are going to complain about the mess and oh I got a spot on me and it burned me so here's like a lawsuit for like 10 million dollars I'm sure that'll happen too but at least it would minimize the bullshit 
Now, granted, I mean, the thing is rather unsafe as it is because if you think of a regular blender, okay, the old one that your mother had on the countertop in the kitchen forever, the old Hamilton Beach or Waring Pro or whatever it was, hopefully in something like Harvest Gold or Avocado Green or any of that stuff, you know, the old school blenders like that, especially when they had the glass uh, carafe on them, yeah, that was serious shit. Now, you could break the glass, which is why they fucking make them out of plastic today, but um, as long as you put the top on and you didn't overfill it, chances are you weren't really going to get hurt by that. Uh, what they did is they basically took the blender and sort of turned the top of it upside down over it, and I understand the idea, but it's still rather inconvenient because now you got to take the thing and turn it upside down and turn it upside down again, turn the thing, unscrew the thing from it, and then pour the shit out. And then you got to wash it. And the next time you use it, you got to turn the thing upside down, put the stuff in it that you want to mix, screw the top on, turn it upside down, put it on the damn thing, turn it, let it do its thing, take it off of that, turn it upside down again. How many fucking times do you have to turn this up and down? It is a rather stupid idea, and that's why you don't buy shit from TV. But anyway, let's continue on with the story. But Nutribullet's attorney says their devices are already governed by rigorous safety standards, and the addition of such a plug could lead to liquid being pumped out and causing a big mess. You just can't allow something like this to be on the market without even caring. I need people to know that this could happen to them, because if I had known that it would have happened to me, I never would have used that device. Fix it. And as you can see, the thing barely works as it is. Besides the fact that the thing is an utter piece of crap, I don't doubt what Nutribullet said. I think that it is indeed due to customer misuse. Or rather, distracted use. Just like texting and driving. Pay the fuck attention to what you're doing. Okay? Quick story. Some years ago, I had gotten a mandolin slicer. Now, what this is, is basically a blade and a ramp. It's very unsafe, but it allows you to cut stuff really, really thin, and it gets, um, you know, even slices every time, and when it works, it works great. So here we were. I got home from work. We're making dinner, and I decided that I was going to cut up the vegetables, and I said, well, how would it let me use the mandolin? So anyway, I turned to the wife who was over at the stove cooking stuff as I was doing this, and I said, look how easy this works, and chopped off part of my pinky. My own fault. I did not sue the company. It was my own fault because I looked away from what I was doing. I rarely use that device now for obvious reasons. <laughs> but even so, if and when I do use it, I always get everyone out of the damn room and watch what I'm doing intently so I don't end up chopping off my fingers again. And yeah, I had to go to the hospital and it was quite painful. I didn't need any stitches. I did lose a little part of my pinky. It's hard. You can't even see it really unless I compare it to my other one, but that's another story entirely. Uh, it was my mistake and it was one of those stupid things that happens and I understand that and it sucked and, you know, I learned my lesson the hard way. But, um, you know, that was all due to my negligence in using the device. It was clearly my fault. Like the lady who spilled the hot coffee on her lap from McDonald's many, many years ago. We all remember that one, right? And won the damn lawsuit. W what did you expect hot coffee to be? Cold? This world's fucked up. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.